In example three, uh, we have a table that provides the population growth for the United States and Mexico each year. And we're asked if we can conclude that on average, the population growth rate in the United States is less than Mexico's. So the first step for this process is to assess the normality of each data set. since the sample sizes are too small. <clears throat> I'm going to leave that for you to evaluate. So you'd want to conduct the Shapiro-Wilk test. Make sure you were stating both of the hypotheses. Identify those p-values and write the correct conclusions. So in this case, we would conclude that both data sets come from normally distributed populations. So we're going to say, since the conditions are met, to test a claim about means, and we've already determined that these are dependent samples. We'll conduct the paired t-test. So I'll be looking for you to state which test you're using, um, just as an indicator to know which route you took to get to your p-value, since I won't be able to see the work and what you plugged into StatCrunch. But stating that you have dependent samples, and then you're using the paired t-test just makes it clear what approach you took for the problem. So since we can test claims about means, we have dependent samples, we'll conduct the paired t-test to test the following hypotheses. So the way StatCrunch will represent this since we're dealing with dependent samples is it'll state that null hypothesis, it'll state our population parameter actually as mu diff so we'll say that that equals zero for our null hypothesis. And our alternative hypothesis, which in this case, our claim is that the population growth rate in the United States is less than Mexico's. So what we're doing is taking the US as our first sample or representing our first population minus Mexico, which is the second population. So if the U.S. is smaller, then that difference should be less than zero. So with my data typed into StatCrunch, I'm going to select Stat, T-Stats, and then instead of two sample, since I'm using the paired T-Test, I'm going to select Paired. We'll select the data in column one, data in column two. We'll set our alternative hypothesis to be less than, or I guess actually have this shortens this is as mu d, so representing the difference of those two population means. Click compute and we get a p-value less than 0 0.0001. So our p-value is less than 0 0.0001, which is less than our value for alpha, which in this case was 0 0.01. So we reject the null hypothesis. And conclude that mu diff or mu d, as StatCrunch says it, is less than, <clears throat> excuse me, less than zero. This means there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the population growth rate in the United States is less than the population growth rate in Mexico. So in this case, the claim is supported. We can reach that conclusion. Our data supports that. So again, the key steps here, the first one that we sort of glossed over, but by now should make sense is assess the normality of each data set. From there, identifying what parameter we're testing, in this case means, and that we have dependent samples, which means we're going to use the paired t-test, then setting up our hypotheses and conducting the test itself. So once we actually identify the test we're using, the conclusion portion of this is the same as it's been for our other hypothesis tests. So really what changes from test the test with all these different tests that we're considering is really just the, the setup, verifying which test is the appropriate one to use. In example four, we're looking at our um, information on Utah Visitor Center um, 
number of people who attended Utah Welcome Centers. So again, you'd want to assess normality. In this case, we would conclude that both data sets come from normally distributed populations. So since the conditions are met to test claims about means, and we're dealing with, we said, independent samples, we'll use the two sample t-test to test the following hypotheses. So StatCrunch is going to represent these hypotheses as the difference between the two means. So our null hypothesis in this case, if the claim is, does the data suggest that Utah sees, on average, a higher number of visitors in summer months? So our null hypothesis is that the difference of those two population means equals zero. Our alternative hypothesis, if the claim is that we see a higher number of visitors in summer months, meaning we're assuming that mu2 should be larger, so the difference of those two values should be less than zero. So we can flip over to StatCrunch to conduct our test. So in this case, we have independent samples. So we're gonna select the two sample t-test with data. We could also do this with summary information if we were given the mean and standard deviation. So we'll select with data. We'll select variable one, variable two, and then set up our alternative hypothesis, which in this case is less than. And we'll also make sure that we uncheck that pool variances option. Clicking compute gives us, gives us a p-value of 0 0.0001, which in this case is less than our value for alpha, which was 0 0.05. So we reject the null hypothesis. And conclude that mu1 minus mu2 is less than 0. So there is sufficient evidence to conclude that Utah sees, on average, a higher number of visitors in summer months. Since what we're saying is mu1 minus mu2 is less than zero, so mu1, which is our non-summer months, is less than our summer months. So there's enough evidence to come to that conclusion. So in this case, the claim is, again, supported.